Hello Type of 3 community, welcome yet back from the developer days. We got another show for you and this year, or not this year, but this time in the interview, we got with us Terry from Google. Hi, nice thanks, you. thanks for having me. Anytime. You've been here for the third time now, right? Yeah, this is my third time. Uh, I've, I've been to two of the events in Nuremberg and now this year in Malmo. That's neat. So. Um, you're working, obviously, with Google. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little branded. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally okay. Everybody mm -hmm. here is. Um, so, is there anything new up your sleeve in terms of cloud in Google? So, um, we have a number of new things that we've released this year. I think uh, some of the cooler things is uh, the Video Intelligence API, um, which uh, allows uh, any, Google, like, any Google Cloud, I'm sorry, any Google cloud platform uh, developer uh, in any runtime, any language, to make calls to analyze video using our APIs. So what they do is they go through the video and extract um, contextual information from the video itself. So things like, there's a dog in this shot, there's a train in this shot, uh, people are dancing in this shot, this is a party. Um, like Neat. Even complicated things they can detect. And then uh, other things like scene detection and whatnot and basically just spit out a giant JSON file that you can then use to index the content of all your video. So I, I would put that into my into my uh, digital asset management solution where I put all my clips in and right. I can then just pick. That's neat. Okay. Is there um, a anything regard in regards to processing times? So do you know how long it takes? Because I mean, um, this is this complicated stuff, right? Yeah, and I, I don't think we have a SLA on how <laughs> long it takes. Um, my experience has been um, usually can get uh, a response back in some some double digit percentage of the total clip time. That's so it's not going to be one percent of the clip time, but it's going to be okay. like somewhere between thirty to sixty percent. Yeah, but that's um, still amazing. Right? Yeah, that's with my trials. Uh, your mileage may vary, <laughs> uh, or your kilometerage may vary. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, no, it it. Uh, it's one of those things that uh, once you start playing with, it's like magical. We have a couple things that are like that, like our our Vision API, which is it's uh, older. Um, it's been out for a while. It's same sort of idea, but for pictures, it can extract uh, emotional information from people. Uh, but my favorite part of it is that um, when you show a landmark, it will identify the landmark. Um, and what's really kind of exciting about it is one, so one of my, my colleagues put it to a test and took a picture of the Eiffel Tower in Paris and took a picture of the Eiffel Tower in Vegas to try to trick it, and it figured it out. Well, that's neat. Um, one of the other things, if you take, so everybody takes a picture of the Eiffel Tower, but to the right of the Eiffel Tower, to the left of the Eiffel Tower, if you're coming, if you're crossing the Sien, those buildings aren't particularly notable, right? But because we have all that information, we can also detect that that's where you're taking the picture. So it also spits back uh, location information. Oh, so uh, f I take a boat every day to, to work when I'm in the office. And I go under the Bay Bridge, which is the less famous bridge in the San Francisco area. And I once took a picture of the Bay Bridge from the boat, and it's all silhouette, so it's all black. So it's very hard to tell what it is. Yeah. Not only did it detect uh, that it was the Bay Bridge, when I put the Latlon coordinates that it had, it dropped me right on the ferry, like the, the transit line for the ferry that I, I ride, like boom. Uh, Without getting the data from, from the not, image or anywhere. It's not, uh, I have confirmed this many, many times, <laughs> just because like every time, like, no, this is not possible. That they're, <laughs> like, no, they just, they, they get it from the picture, the, from analyzing the, what they know about the picture. And um, I, won't, I can't go in too deep into this special sauce of it, but um, from information about the picture and yeah. the number of pictures we've analyzed, we're able to come up with that. But this this could be very helpful for content management people, for editors, yeah. to say you 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 got a bulk of images that mm -hmm. you I know gathered over the years, and you just put it into your content management system, and we, we then analyze these with the Vision API, yeah. right? With a Vision API, and then have automated metadata for that. Yeah. That same object detection I talked about in Vis the, the video API also works in Vision API, so it'll tell you what items are in that picture. So you definitely can do that. That seems just as spooky as amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And uh, we're actually making moves to take, uh, so these are machine learning API, uh, machine learning models that we have made into products, but we're making steps to make machine learning easier for other people to pick up. Uh, so you can tr basically train your own models on several of our machine learning tools. Now, I'm not a okay. real deep expert in them. I, I tend to be more on the computing side, but uh, it's a really exciting thing, and it's, it's something that we at Google Cloud are talking about a lot. Um, so you can use our models, which is great. We have a number of them, speech and video and, and uh, images and natural language. Uh, but then we also have this ability to, you can train your own models on our hardware. Oh, nice. Um, and t uh, take so advantage. But this is for, I think, I, I guess, bigger projects, right? This is Where for you bigger got a projects, lot of right? Stuff like if you're, you know, um, an example uh, that I heard, someone had the idea of like training a machine learning model to figure out whether or not someone was wearing a mask, uh, which would be helpful like for a security camera, right? Yeah. So um, if you're making security software for a bank, uh, physical security software for a bank and you wanted to basically alert someone when someone's face was obscured, uh, you could train a model that just picks All right, face yeah. obscured. F you know, we expect the face to be here, but the face is obscured and alert security that someone wow. with an obscured face is in, you know, in the building. That's neat. Anything else up the computing side? I, think, I mean, this is very yeah. futuristic. Uh, yeah. Well, the computing side, we have mm -hmm. uh, a lot of great things. Um, I am often, I, I, uh, when I talk to the Type 3 community, I tend to focus on our computing platform, like App Engine, yeah. um, which is a very highly scalable um, tool for running apps. Um, uh, and Kubernetes is what I was talking about here at uh, Developer Days. Um, for those of you that might not be familiar, Kubernetes is a container orchestration system. So. If you're switching over containers and running one container is relatively easy, but once you start getting into the problem of having tons of microservices that are all talking to one another, that all need uh, at work, uh, sorry, external connections, and y you basically have a lot to manage. Yeah, so the networking um, between containers and stuff, right? Exactly. Um, and running multiple copies so that you know you can do maintenance on oh, yeah. one running version of the code, and if you have really high demand, you can run extra you know extra instances of your code um, to meet that demand. So Kubernetes manages all of that for you. Um, so you basically just say either run twelve of these all the time and match it up with this external IP address, and it just will wire that all for you, or you can say. Um, I would like this process to be running at a minimum of one, so always leave one one container running, uh, and I want its processor utilization to be sixty percent, okay. because uh, you know that's like the healthy, uh, the healthy capacity for your machine. So it'll watch them, and as uh, as your your processor utilization goes up and hits sixty, it will spin up another one until these both hit sixty, and then spin right, up another so one and keep going. And then when your load goes down, it'll start contracting. And then much like App Engine, but App Engine is, I guess, more managed. App Engine is, is yes, it's more managed uh, on our side. So, as a as a customer, you just throw your code up, and you don't have to worry about the underlying system. With Kubernetes, you care more about the underlying system, uh, and like you have to, but uh, you can run anything that runs a container. Fair and enough. You have a lot more options for for other things above that. And when you run Kubernetes on on us, we have a managed version of it called Container Engine, in addition to scaling the processes, we can actually scale the machines that are running the processes. So you can have like a ah. completely auto-scalable, okay. um, kind of very elastic to your your needs um, size installation. That sounds pretty amazing. Is there any effort going on to have the Type of 3 Google Cloud thing run on Kubernetes? Did you have some? Um, so I've done a little bit of research um, in that, and it appears you guys have a Docker image, right? We do. A uh, couple of them, though. A couple of them. Uh, <laughs> as, and as that, is, that is always, <laughs> yeah, that is always the problem. Um, but if you can run it in a Docker container, you can run it on Kubernetes. It's, um, Kubernetes manages the uh, orchestration of all of them, making sure they're all running and, and wire up the networking, but the actual containerization is Docker. Okay. So I develop in Docker and then move my stuff over to Kubernetes in production. And so it, you're still on, like, Homeland territory, right? So you know where you're moving along. It, you know it's a container, and, yep. and you guys it's take care of it. It's the same exact technology. Um, 
it's a one to one. Like I don't have to change my Docker files to move them to Kubernetes. Uh, what I what I tend to do is have a little bit of configuration that lives outside of the Docker container for Kubernetes itself, and then I run a make file to run it to launch it in Docker, and then I run a different uh, make file to launch the same container in Kubernetes. All right, that's I mean that sounds simple enough yeah. to get this running. Yeah, it's once once you once you get the hang of it, Kubernetes is um, from the outside. It's a little complex um, because there's just a lot. There's you're abstracting away a lot of configuration, so there's a lot of pieces. Uh, but once you once you kind of dip your toes in and start to understand it, it makes a lot of sense. And then uh, launching containers becomes very very easy. All right. Um, <coughs> questions we get a lot. Um, is about how can I try out stuff on mm -hmm. Google Cloud? So, so people seem to have issues with, with you know, like getting started. Yep. Do you have like a couple of minutes to share on that? So the first thing I would say is if you go to cloud.google.com slash free, uh, that's, uh, that's a funnel for getting into our free trial. Our free trial is relatively easy to set up. Um, and what it gives you is $300 of credit uh, converted to your your currency, Lo local currency, yeah, yeah. Um, for 12 months, and then uh, above that we have a free tier. So it includes a whole bunch of things. It's per product, right? So on our VMs, you get a um, micro instance. You get one micro instance is always free. So if you spin up a whole bunch of micro instances, one of them will be free. Okay. Um, for storage, you get what, what uh, five gigabytes per month free. Um, Which to is totally f sufficient for testing purposes. Exactly, right? yeah. exactly. So the idea is we want, when people are testing, when people are trying out, we want them to use it. We, we, we don't want them to incur costs um, because it doesn't help us, it doesn't help them. So, uh, so, all, so we have the free tier and the free trial. An important distinction I make about our free trial is that uh, when you sign up, you'll be asked for a credit card. A lot of people go, uh, I'm, I'm nervous about that. That's for verification, so we like... Um, you know we're cause, real. Because, <laughs> yeah, when you give out free computing power, uh, you attract people that want to do bad things. Um, and unfortunately, that's the cost of... Uh, that is the cost of giving out free credit as we, we ask for a credit card. But to, in order to be billed, it is a second step. Um, okay. So what you do is, uh, let's say you spin up a VM, and you run it, and you run it... Uh, you spin up one of a really large VM, so it, 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 runs out of, it runs out of your credit really fast. Um, and uh, so, you know, you run it for a month and you run out of your free credit or as you approach the end of your free credit, we'll send a message that says, hey, you're getting close to your, the end of your free credit. Um, in order to continue using this machine, you need to enable billing on your account. And when you enable billing on your account, that's you saying, yes, charge me for this. Um, so if, nothing if can happen unless you knowingly push correct. that button, right? So in that case, if you don't do anything, we will shut down your machine. Um, Fair enough. <laughs> and uh, and not not charge you for it. Um, so it's something I I really value uh, that in our in our program that we're very mindful of. We're very mindful in general of cost. Um, our uh, our VMs. One of the one of the cool features of our VMs. If you run one, let's say you you spin up an eight processor machine and you're running it, you run it for two months, and we notice um, we actually do machine learning on usage. Uh, and we'll we'll see. Hey, this this machine is running eight processors, but it really could it could get by with four, and you would save one hundred and seventy one dollars a month. So you'll get a little alert in your console that says, Hey, just just so you know, you could do this and you would save money. And if you want, just click this button and we'll do it for you. Um, so we wow. try to we try to build in that sort of um, you know we build by the minute we um, you have options. For hold on, you, you build by um, by the minute? Yes. So when you spin up, when you spin up a VM, uh, we charge you, you. You get charged for the first ten minutes. Just it's a ten minute minimum. But after that, we'll charge you for the minute. Um, so um, that's super fair. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> well, I think so. But uh, but I'm you know I'm paid to think so. Uh, but yeah, no. It, we have a number of those things like uh, preemptible VMs. Um, if you want to use one of our VMs, but uh, you don't want to pay the cost, what you can do is spin up what we call a preemptible VM, which is guaranteed to go down sometime in the next 24 hours. So like the underlying hardware is scheduled for maintenance? It'll, well, not, not necessarily maintenance, but just we'll use it somewhere else. Something along those lines, yeah. All right. But 
we we promise that you can spin it up and you can run it for as long as you can run it, but you will lose it at a maximum of 24 hours. But it is one fifth the cost. One fifth. Yes. Wow. And so um, this, I I don't know Amazon products and uh, like I don't know their names, but there's a comparable. Well, the, the, this there's is a, the Google interview. It's cool. Right, we just, right, right, we just right. stay with Google <laughs> stuff. <laughs> well, th- there's a comparable um, <coughs> mechanic for them, which is an auction system where you bid uh, for um, for reduced cost usage with ours you just get it there's no bidding it's always one fifth the cost with the guarantee that'll go down sometime in the next 24 hours so it's not for a durable thing like a website right it's not for something you want available 24 7 but i could imagine stuff like testing service that basically exists for five minutes yeah and it doesn't matter if it's gone afterwards yeah. because we're not going to reuse it anyways that would be like yep testing or um, batch work, like you have a whole bunch of video that you want to encode or do something to. As long as you have it set up as a queue, you don't really care if one of the machines that's processing it goes away, because you can always we can, you can always resurrect one um, and uh, get it. You know, you basically get a new one and s- sick it on that job um, until the job is done. Okay. Um, and one of our one of really interesting uh, it was uh, where was it in Berlin. Um, we have a we had a a customer who uses RVMs power Kubernetes uh, under the covers, and a lot of the technology under the covers is the same. So they use preemptible VMs to power their Kubernetes cluster because if the pods die, if if the containers died, it's fine. It would move them over to another one, okay. and they can spin up one. And so they got their Kubernetes uh, costs way down because they were able to take advantage of of, of that. So we we we're very cost sensitive. Um, we uh, we try to be not just we try not to just be the cheapest, which we try to be, but we try to make sure that you're billed very tightly to your usage because um, we don't want you like it doesn't do anybody any good. Like yeah, we could get that extra money, but it doesn't really do anybody good if 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 uh, you can't take advantage of that really cloudy part of it, which is as you need things. You ask yep. for them and you pay for them, and as you don't need them, you put them back and you don't pay for them. That's like a that's like the most brilliant closing. I couldn't have <laughs> gotten any better. Hey, thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks again. And, uh, always thanks. I love I love coming to Developer Days. The Typo Three community is amazing, so I really love being a part of it. Yeah, we'll we'll always invite you back. I tell you. <laughs> All right, so check out uh, the Google Cloud Services. Um, we'll put a link in the description below and as usual if you have any comments feedback just put a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe so later bye